Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is a small cylinder that I 3D printed. Uh, I did this as a test piece. Um, my 3D printer has not been performing as well as it might recently. And uh, I wanted to try and figure out what the problem is and fix it. And I thought you guys might be interested. So what I've done is I've printed, I basically created these in Tinkercad and I printed them. They're just basically cylinders. Um, this one's 20 millimeters in diameter, this one's 10 millimeters. And they're not great. Uh, let me bring the camera in closer and show you them, show you some old prints and see what we're talking about. Right, so if we look at these a bit closer, uh, you can see they're quite rough. Um, they're not very cylindrical. There's various, like, they're just not great. I mean, it's like there's a big, I'm trying to get the light on it so you can see it. Um, but there's a big line down there. Um, and it's it's not round. It's kind of, you can, I don't know if you can see, um, there's kind of like lots of dips and, and ridges in it and things. And this one's even worse. Um, I mean, if I turn it, you can see it, the light catching it. It should be a perfectly smooth cylinder, and it isn't. Um, and just for comparison, uh, this is a piece I printed a while ago. Um, and this was uh, a test piece, actually. Uh, I was printing a suppressor for my son's airsoft rifle. And uh, this piece, I can't remember the name of the guy. I'll have to see if I can find it, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, but this is a test piece that the guy supplied with it because on the inside of that, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a thread and it's a 14 millimeter left hand thread and that screws onto the end of the rifle, onto the end of the barrel. And so you, you, the idea of this piece is you can print it, test it, see if it fits. And if it doesn't fit, you can scale it on your, on your printer. Um, as it turned out, this fit perfectly. But it's if you look at the outside of that, um, it's it's so much smoother than either of these. I mean, it's about the same size there. It's a little bit bigger. But look at how rough that is compared to this. And also this has, say, a fairly fine metric thread inside it that fits perfectly. Um, so it's, it's not great. Another thing, just as a, an, another example, this is a, a trap door that I printed a while ago uh, for one of my daughter's um, little buildings. You've seen me print various ones of those before. Um, so that's what it used to look like and this is one I did a little while ago and you can see the difference in quality between those two is staggering. This is fine, this is awful. Um, so there's obviously something wrong with the printer. So I think what we need to do is have a look at the printer and see where the problem lies. So let's go and do that. Right, so this is my printer. This is an Anet A8. Uh, that I bought uh, off Kickstarter, I believe, quite a while ago now. I think I've had this about four years now. Uh, and I've actually been quite pleased with it. It's, it's done quite well. For, for like an entry-level printer, it's, it's performed surprisingly well. Um, one of the things that people get a bit excited about with these printers is mods. And they say, oh, you know, you need to put loads of mods on them to make them work properly. And you actually don't. I mean, this has worked fine for me. Um, the main things I've done with it here is um, it's got uh, a glass plate on the bed, which I put on. That was a huge improvement. Um, so, you know, ever since then, I've had no problems with bed adhesion or anything like that. Uh, it has... Uh, I changed... Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So here... Um, there used to be a, a heat sink on here, uh, and then there's a fan that, that cools where the filament goes in to um, uh, prevent it melting before it gets to the nozzle. Uh, the trouble is, if you want to change the filament or do anything while the printer's running, it's quite difficult because you have to like unbolt the heat sink and take it off. So I made this little bracket here, and what that does is you can just loosen this screw and then just flip that out of the way so that you can get to all the insides and you can see what you're doing when you want to change the um, the filament or something while it's running. And then again, when, you, when you're when you done, just loosen the screw, drop it back down. That works fine. I've also, you can see here, there's a terminal block. One of the things I've found is these fans tend to wear out quite quickly because they're just cheap, like PC fans. 
and they do tend to wear out quite quickly so um, you can see here before where I've changed this fan I actually cut the wires resoldered them and then put heat shrink on it but what I'm going to do in future which is what I've done here is just put a terminal block on it so the next time this fan goes I can just take the wires out put a new fan on connect it up and it's done so I think as far as mods go that's a bit about it oh the the, um, the nozzle cooling fan is a slightly different one to the one that came with it but again these are all very very minor things um, one of the problems a lot of people talk about with these printers is this connection back here for the hot end for the for the um, for the bed and they have a tendency to burn out but the reason that that happens is because you've got the wires coming off the back here and these wires are basically drag as the as the bed moves backwards and forwards it's obviously dragging on these wires so what i've done is i literally put a hook in the ceiling above the printer put a bit of string around it and i just oh let's move that out of the way um and i just tie it up like that and that takes the weight off the cable and stops it from dragging on this plug you know people will spend hours trying to solder these wires directly to the bed and you don't need to but anyway that's beside the point um so we need to figure out what's wrong with this thing and i think i know what the problem is if i push this carriage across uh i don't know whether you'll be able to see it but there and I don't know if you can hear that. Let me put the microphone next to it. I don't know how well you could hear that, but you can actually see it like clunking and jerking and you won't be able to tell on the camera, but I can tell you these, there are bearings, linear bearings in here and they, they feel very crunchy and I think basically what's happened is the bearings are shot um, so you've got three bearings on the back here there are four bearings underneath the table or the bed and then there's a bearing each side here that um, for it to ride up and down on so what I've done is I've ordered a new set of bearings uh, and I've also, I thought, because I'm going to have to basically take the printer apart to do this. So what I've done is I've also got this as well. Um, so this is new belt, because this belt is getting a bit long in the tooth now. Um, but I've also got new, uh, let me take out the bag so you can see it. I've got new uh, idler pulleys. Focus, focus. Now these ones, oh, fluff. Get off. These ones are actually toothed. The ones that are on it are not and they don't really fit the belt very well so i've got these as well so i thought while i've got it all apart i'll change the belts i'll change all the pulleys and i'm also going to fit uh, this which is something that i printed a long time ago uh, this is actually a belt tensioner for the carriage so that goes on the back of the carriage i'll show you in a minute and that actually helps you to tension this because this belt really isn't tight enough um, but when we get round to it, I'll show you how this fits on and how it'll improve the system. So the next thing we've got to do is pull it all apart. So let's get on with it. Right, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is take the bed off. So I've just got the, uh, the glass held on with these um, bulldog clips. <laughs> it works really well. So that just comes off like that. Put that over there, out the way, where it's safe, it won't get broken. Let's take the bed off. I've actually made some changes to this bed. I'll, um, I'll show you, as I take it apart, what I've done. Because it makes a big difference. So like I say, most of the changes that I've made to this printer are of a mechanical nature rather than a like a, a 3d printed nature it's basically just ways to improve um, 
a sort of fairly sloppy uh, <laughs> you know build quality and components let's unplug oh, get off. unplug that right so this is um, I never remember which one's X, Y, and Z, but this, this motor here, this stepper motor, basically works this pulley and pulls the bed backwards and forwards. The bed rides on this frame. Now, originally, this is like three millimeter thick aluminium. And originally, there were just holes drilled in this with a thread cut in them for the screws to go through, which adjust the height of the bed. And you know three millimeter aluminium with a thread cut in it yeah that's going to last really well so what i did was i actually got some nut certs and i drilled the holes out and i've actually soldered these nut certs into the aluminium so now there's a much bigger thread and it's steel not aluminium so that's that but we need to take this off first so let's pop these screws out as we're doing this is you you're basically having to take the print almost completely apart which is not the end of the world but it's just a bit of a nuisance that's why I thought while I'm doing this I might as well change all the belts and everything as well because there's a couple of nuts in there that I don't want to lose. But this is the bearing I was talking about. Come on, focus. Thank you. So what we're going to do basically is replace this bearing here with this pulley here. So you can see this is a, uh, it's bigger, so the belt will ride around it better and it's also toothed, so it'll engage better. So that we'll change that in a minute. these rods out so these are the bearing carriers focus there we go um, so the bearings are inside here and they're fitted with circlips so we'll pop those out in a minute and take the bearings out now we've got to take this off, which is going to be fun, because it means almost dismantling the thing entirely. Yay. <sighs> right, so I've just turned the print around so you can see the back of this uh, carriage here. And you can see this is how the belts are attached at the moment on the top. There's basically two screws in there, and the belt is just looped back on itself and cable tied, and then just hooks over that screw on each side and it's not a good solution there's no adjustment to it at all um, so what I've got to do now is take these guide rods out uh, to get the, the bearing get these bearings off um, so what I'm going to do is I'll take the belt off take these rods out uh, take the carriage off and then when we put it back together we'll use uh, this uh, adjuster which fits basically over the top like that and uh, we'll go into a bit more detail about how this works afterwards, but I think it's going to be a much better solution. Um, I mean, you don't want the belts too tight. You don't want like a bowstring, but you want them tight enough that there's no like play in them as it's moving. So let me take this off and then we'll uh, get all the bearings changed. Right, so now we've got uh, basically an explosion in a printer factory. <laughs> We can start uh, 
replacing part. So these are the, oh, come on, focus. These are the new bearings. Uh, they come in a set of uh, 12, I think it was. Um, you don't actually need that many, but. Ah. So there's the bearing. So what we'll do is we'll just try that quickly on one of the rods and make sure it actually fits. Right, so I'll just give that rag a bit of a spray of WD-40 and then we'll just give it a, a wipe to get all the guff off because, oh my God, that's filthy. Um, so we'll just give that a quick clean. Like that. And then we'll just take this bearing and that fits on there. Focus, thank you. Um, that fits nicely on there. There's there's a little bit of play in it, but I'm not worried about that. So we'll put that on. Okay, now to get these bearings out, we've got a pair of circlip pliers here. So we go in, we get the circlip, squeeze, pull that out like that and hopefully now we can push that bearing out I'll take the circlip out of this end as well it might make life a bit easier shouldn't need to really but it might make it a bit easier to push it out ah there we go ah get out oh that's disgusting well, the bearing's all full of fluff and dry as a bone and uh, just worn out. So, yeah, hopefully replacing this should go some way towards alleviating that. And what I'll do is I'll just clean that out a little bit. Let's get a new bearing. All right, let's put one of the circlips back in. So we've got something to push it up against. Oh, not that far. Oh, there we go. Right, get in there, you. Okay, then if we push this in from this end, like that, and then put other circlip back in like so oh get off let go and that's that so I'll do the other what six or seven of these and uh, then we can start looking at the longer bearings right now I need to get this bearing out of here this is a longer bearing now, I don't know how easy, to, difficult this is going to be to get out, but I don't know whether to push it. Right, uh, I think what we need to do is find something that we can stand that on that's got a suitably sized hole that we can push the bearing into. Uh, let me find something. Right, I've got a 15 mil socket here. So if we put that over like that, and let's see if I can get that to come out. Oh, it's quite tight in there. What I really, the trouble is, what you really want is like a something to push in that end. But the problem is, because it's got a hole in the middle of it, it's a bit difficult. Uh, let's try an experiment. Right, I don't know if that will work to push it out or not. Let's see what happens here. If I hold that there, give that a tap on the end with a copper hammer. Oh, it's coming. Got to use the edge of the bench, hang on. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. Right, that worked. So here are the new ones. 
So they're the same um, size as the other ones. They're just or the same, like, you know, basic dimensions. They're just longer. Um, so this is a pack of four, but we only actually need two of them. So I'll pop this one in here. Uh. Right, that goes in there very easily. That's nice. Right, uh, I'll do the other one. And then um, I think we can start. Oh, actually, I've got to do one more thing. Um, I need to widen this slightly because the problem is the um, the replacement uh, sprockets that I've got are actually slightly wider than the ones that came with it. So I need to open this up a bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll put this in the vise and um, just file it out a little bit. So I'll go away and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so I have uh, modified this now. So I've put the new bearing in as we saw. I, um, I've just cleaned this out a little bit, just opened it up slightly with a Dremel. And uh, I've put the, the new um, bearing in. Now the trouble is with these bearings, they're actually five mil. So what I've done is I've drilled out the hole to five mil uh, and I've put a, a, a machine screw and a, and a nut on the end. I need some nylock nuts really, but I've got some on order. But that'll do for now. So now we can start putting this all back together. Right, now for the fun bit, let's try and get this belt into the tensioner. Now I've never used one of these before, so, so we want to get that. Let's go a little bit more like that and push that in there. That should hold that end nice and tight. Yeah, that won't pull out of there. So now this end needs to go around there and then loop back on itself like that. Oh! Ugh or just come flying off either way we'll try that again shall we without the oops as a wise man once said right that goes there and then we've got to get that in there right that went on a lot easier than i thought it was going to i have to say and so now we need to get an allen key in the end of there and tighten this up. That's actually already tight, much tighter than it was before. <laughs> so we're off to a good start. The thing is, what you've got to remember with these belts is it doesn't need to be like a bowstring. It doesn't need to be super tight. I think the problem a lot of people have with these is they think the belts have to be like rigid tight. And I've actually heard of people snapping the frames of the printers from over tightening the belts. So, I mean, that's not far off. So let's get an Allen key in there and uh, tighten it up a bit. Right, so there's the Allen key. So we'll pop that in there. And hopefully, let me see if I can do this. I'll keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Right, now if you watch this, when I tighten this screw, it should, you see it moving, it's pulling the belt tight. And I think, quite frankly, that is plenty tight enough. That's much, much better than it was previously. So, I like I said, I printed that thing, must be two or three years ago, and I just never got around to putting it on. So, uh, hopefully that should be a big improvement. So... What do we need to do now? Now we need to do the bottom, the bed. So let's get on with that. Uh, so I've got the new belt on the bottom here. Uh, I've also just slackened the front of the chassis off for a second. I'll tell you why in a minute. And I've also modified this H-frame. Instead of using these little plastic clips that go across there to hold the belt, which are always rubbish, um, one of the things they give you with this kit are these, uh, I'll show you this one. It's um, uh, like a little uh, aluminium block with teeth on it. And the belt fits in those teeth. The ribs on the belt fit in those teeth. So what I've done is I've drilled 
uh, a five millimeter hole in the middle of the uh, the H bracket, and I'm going to put the belt uh, onto that and then tighten it up. And I think that will um, be a lot better and hold a lot tighter than those little plastic clips did. So what I've got to do now is put the guide rods back in and put the bearings on here. So I think what I'll do is we'll put a guide rod in each side, just loose like that. One there and one there. Because what we don't want is for these to bind up so we put one, two on that side, like that, put that back through there. You see normally you'd clamp these in first, but I'm not doing that for a reason. I'll show you the reason in a minute. Right, so let's get these screws in. So we'll just put the screws in loose to start with, obviously just put a couple in each one because like I say what we don't want to happen is we don't want to put any strain on these rods or on the bearings we want everything to run nice and free all right that's fine so we can tighten these all up okay now what I want to do I'm not quite sure how well this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. Put that under there like that. And then, oh, get on there. So I want to cut that just there. All right. goes there and then we put that under there like that like so and then we tighten up this screw right okay stay in there you and you Right, now the reason I've left these loose at the front here is because what I can do now is tighten that up and pull that belt. Just put a bit of tension on that belt. Again, not like a bowstring. We just want it, we just want to take the slack out of it. and that will stop those rods popping out there we go right now that should be fine there is a little slight bit of a bow to that I might just slacken that off a touch We don't want it too tight. Because what it'll also do if it's too tight is it'll put too much strain on the uh, on the motor, which we don't want. But that seems to be okay. Right, those belts are much tighter than they were before. So, let's just make 
sure these are all nice and snug, which they are. Right, so now we've got the unenviable job of putting the bed and everything back on and then levelling it all up and trying to get it to print straight again. <laughs> right, that'll be next. Okay, so we've got this back where it lives. Um, I really do need to have a proper tidy up around here. It's a bit of a pigsty, but um, it's fine for now. Um, let me turn it on and then we'll... Uh, just do some tests and see make sure it's working okay right well it's powered up that's the first thing uh, so that's a good start uh, let's go to quick settings and home all Okay, well that seemed to work all right. <laughs> uh, right, let me get the bed leveled and then we'll try test print and see what happens. Uh, now, this is gonna be awkward, but I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try and show you how to level the bed um, because, you know, it might be of interest to someone. Uh, basically, le what leveling the bed means, it means getting the nozzle here uh, a consistent distance from the bed uh, all the way around so that uh, the bed is perfectly level in relation to the nozzle. Now the way you do this you've got these spring loaded screws on each corner and by screwing those in and out you basically raise and lower the bed uh, and you can do that on each corner. So what you do is you get Normally they recommend using a sheet of paper, um, but I'm using a feeler gauge because I have feeler gauges. And you basically slide the feeler gauge in under the, the nozzle, and then you wind the bed down, and you can see, hopefully, that that's passing easily underneath the nozzle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lift the bed back up until the feeler gauge is feeling tight basically what you want to be able to do is just slip the feeler gauge under the nozzle between the nozzle and the bed which is about there so that's that one now we slide the bed across to the next one and do the same thing then bring the bed forwards and do the ones at the back. So that's basically how you level the bed. I just thought that might be, you know, interesting to some of you. <laughs> you can get these automatic bed leveling systems, but I just, I, I've never bothered with one. I think this, you know, the one, the thing I found with this is once you've got the bed level, um, you don't have to touch it again. Uh, I, people seem to have a lot of trouble with leveling beds. I, I don't really understand why. Um, because I found that once I've got the bed leveled and locked down, it, it doesn't move from one you know print to the next. Uh, I mean, I think prior to doing this, I hadn't leveled this bed for about, I don't know, maybe six or seven months, and that was because I changed the nozzle. And because I'd taken it, taken it all apart, I had to then re-level the bed. But apart from that, it, I've never had to bother. But anyway, that's, that's how you do it. I should also mention, actually, once I've got the screw where I want it, I put a wing nut on the bottom there and tighten it up against the carriage. So basically hold the screw with the screwdriver and then tighten up that wing nut and that basically locks this screw in place so that it can't move. Some people use um, like thumb screws, like the round knurled thumb screws, which I think is probably quite a good idea, but um, I just use the wing nuts because that's what came with it and they've always worked for me. So. Um, but they can be a bit tricky because <laughs> when you're working upside down, especially the ones at the back, they can be quite awkward. But um, yeah, it seems uh, 
to work. It's worked for me, so um, anyway, I'll get this done and then we'll try a print. Uh, so I've got the bed level to where I think it's level now. Um, what I'm going to do now is I need to put the filament back in the hot end. So I've got the printer set to preheat, so it's, it's warmed everything up. So what I'm going to do is to make it easier to feed the filament in, as I mentioned before, I've got this bracket on here. So I just loosen that, flip it out of the way, and now I take the end of my filament and pop it down the hole. Stop laughing at the back. And I can now see exactly what I'm doing. And that goes straight in there, you see. And I don't know if you can see from this angle, but that's gone straight in where it wants to be. So now I can just loosen this screw, drop that back down, tighten it up, job's a good one. So, let's try a print. There we go. I might stop this really quickly depending on how it starts going. What this is doing at the moment is it's printing what's called a skirt. And the skirt is just a single line of filament that it prints around the outline of the print. And the reason I do that is because it makes sure that it's actually extruding before it starts printing. And I think we're gonna need to raise that bed a bit, but let's see what it does. Basically what this print is, it's one I did myself and it's just four squares, one in each corner of the bed to check whether it's level and I can tell you now, that's not level. <laughs> so I need to raise the bed slightly. So you can actually do this while it's running, it's a bit tricky but... Right, let's just loosen that off. And let that up a bit. Yeah, that's nowhere near level. Oh, sorry, it does one in the middle as well. Yeah, this is nowhere near level. It needs to come up more. I'll loosen all these off. And go one turn up. Ugh, these are the tricky ones to get to, the ones at the back, trying to get to them without getting your fingers caught or getting your fingers trapped is the tricky bit. Alright, let's see what happens now. That's looking a bit better. Right, I think I'm just going to need to do this corner as well quickly. Ah. That looks pretty good. But the thing is, it's the way that this belt is moving. It's not juddering and jumping like it was before. I think that might want to come up a touch more on that one. See what happens when the print head moves out of the way. 
but that one's looking fine that one's not too bad that one's awful but hopefully we we'll be better on the next pass we'll see what this one does over here What you have to remember, of course, when you're doing this is that as you move each corner, it does affect the other corners. So it's a kind of a balancing act to get it right across all four corners. Uh, it's not looking too bad. Lock that one off. That looks really nice. That one's very nice. Right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to cancel this print and uh, I'll try it again, get the bed fully dialed in and then we'll do our test print. So let me do that and we'll come back and have a look at it. Okay, so I did the test print again. Uh, it's come out absolutely perfect. Uh, I mean, just to show you, if I can show you, focus. That's one of the, uh, that's just the first layer uh, of one of the prints. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but that's, that's the top of it. And that's the underside that goes against the bed. It's uh, looking very, very nice. The beds, and all five of them are like that. So the bed is perfectly level. So what I'm gonna do now is print our cylinder test pieces and see what they look like. So we'll do that and hopefully we'll put this all to bed. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Right, so our test prints have completed. So here are our old ones, just to remind ourselves of the general level of nastiness. And here are our new ones. So let's start with the big one, because I think that's probably the easiest thing. So I think you can see there, there is a distinct improvement. There are a couple of little artifacts that have come up on the back of this, I don't quite know why. But um, I'm not really worried about that. Uh, I think you'll find that it's way, way better um, and the same for the for the smaller one. That's also got the little a little artifact on the back, which I don't understand. Um, but even so, it's still you can see it's much much better. And the other thing that I found weird is I don't know if you can really tell, but this one, the the original one, is slightly oval compared to the, this one is round. This one is actually I didn't notice it at first. It's actually slightly oval. So I think we can say safely that this is a marked improvement. And just to prove the point, if we go back to what we were looking at before, this was the door I showed you before, if you remember. And this is the one that I just printed, which again, not perfect, but much, much better. Uh, I've also got this one. This one came off the resin printer. And obviously that's you know much better detail wise. But I think you can agree that this one here that I've just printed 
is much closer to this than it is to this. So yeah, that's uh, a marked improvement. Very pleased with all that. So uh, yeah, I think that was uh, time and a bit of money well spent. So uh, that's all really. I thought you might be interested to see the difference it can make just doing a few well, it's maintenance, really. It's not even upgrade. It's just maintenance more than anything. Uh, change the bells, change the bearings, and order is restored. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully this was of interest to some of you. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.